take this purposeful pause this morning to remind that the local hockey team still isn't dead, still has some pretty good players, still has something to play for. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Penguins 6, Red Wings 3 last night at PPG Paints Arena. I was over there covering it full column at the top of DK Pittsburgh Sports on your app today. Six different goal scorers, lots of different people producing points. Goals from, in order, Riley Smith, Sidney Crosby, Valtteri Pustinen, Michael Bunting, Lars Eller, and Drew O'Connor with the empty netter and a well-deserved one at that because he played his rear end off all night long. Overall, just a fairly complete performance. And if it sounds like I'm hesitating a little bit, it's because there was always something there that kind of felt a little bit on edge. You know, maybe that's just unfair because of precedent, and maybe the Red Wings never really were threatening in the third period, but it kind of felt like they always could, even right to the end, really. But they got the job done, outshot Detroit 40-27, to had a couple of power play goals. Gasp. <laughs> Got some okay defending. Got some okay goaltending from Alex Nadelkovic. And it felt a lot like things had started to settle themselves a little bit more. Some players in that locker room pointed, and maybe this will sound a little bit goofy in retrospect, but they pointed to the Rangers game on Saturday as having pushed them toward doing some better things. They got the four goals. They were competitive with a really, really good team. Maybe the best team in the East. We'll see how that plays out. And they really, really were terrible in one specific area, and that was defending the net front, and that's not a small thing. But they had a lot of other things going for them, and they felt like they took a step forward against the Wings. Oh, and one other thing. They're back within five points of those wings. Now, you can watch that opponent last night and say to yourself, they're not hanging around in that wild card spot no matter what. But that should make you feel even better about the Penguins' chances of getting into the playoffs because now they're not actually chasing the wings. They're chasing somebody who's currently behind the wings, which would mean that they're less than five points out of that last wild card spot. Now, wait, what's that you're piping back in this direction? You don't care about that. You don't want to. You have nothing to say about the playoffs. Doesn't matter to you if they make it or not. Well, I have some news for you this morning. It matters to them. How do I know? I asked. I started with Sid. How much would it mean to this group to get into the playoffs? I mean, everyone's talked about the uphill yeah. climb and everything, but yeah. here it is. You're five points out. Yeah, it'd be huge. Um, you know, we just, you know, we got to go a game at a time and get points, but, um, you know, I think we all, we're all pushing. We're all trying to do what we can to put ourselves in that position, and, you know, we've got to just worry about going out there and get the next one. I then went about 15 feet to his left and asked Chris Letang. Being in the playoffs used to be automatic around here, but how much would it mean to you guys under these circumstances to make it? You know what I mean? How satisfying would it be? Yeah, no, it, it would be uh, it would be a good accomplishment, especially uh, you know with the season that we had, um, the ups and downs mm -hmm. the last uh, few weeks. Um, yeah, and we're still there, and if we can make something of that chance, it would be great. Now anybody can say anything. If you've been following the team long enough, you know to trust these two. They've not exactly become known as BS artists. And once they've started speaking of the playoffs as something more than, gee, it's such a big hill to climb and we're just going to keep 
being in it until we're not in it anymore, and all this other stuff that we'd been hearing over the previous couple of weeks, this sounded a little bit different, and I kind of liked it. More important than that, obviously, I liked what I saw on the ice. I don't get the sense that the older veterans, whether it's Sid, Latang, Evgeny Malkin, whoever, are in any sort of pouting mode. If they were before, they aren't now. Sid scored a pretty nice little backhand goal in front, then set up Lars Eller with just a wonderful sequence between the two of them for a power play to redirect by Eller. And there were a few other feel-good facets to this game. Now, I say that, and the number one on that list was that if they'd lost, they'd have been done. I'm sorry. Falling nine points behind and... Not being able to beat an opponent like that. But as it is, they're flying out later tonight to Newark. So am I. And they're going to play the Devils tomorrow night in a game that might just have similar repercussions. The Devils are another one of those teams in that pack. The Devils have given them trouble the same way that teams like, to be honest, the Red Wings and the Sabres. And the Hurricanes of the younger, faster, fresher-looking teams have given them trouble for what I would imagine obvious reasons. Well, the Penguins took care of that last night. They'll need to take care of it again in Newark. And whether or not people get behind their cause, whether or not people think the playoffs are important in 2024, it's starting to feel to me as if it is to them. We come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Elaine, who says, DK, why should I be invested in the Penguins making the playoffs? Because even if they do, I'm afraid we're going to see another crash and burn where Mike Sullivan makes some really dubious decisions. I just don't want to get my hopes up anymore. And Elaine, I get that. I totally get that sentiment. I even get the part where you threw in a specific there about Sullivan making dubious decisions. I don't think that Sullivan has cost the Penguins playoff games or playoff series. I think losing, for example, your top two goaltenders in a series against the Rangers had a lot to do with the Penguins blowing a 3-1 to one series lead to New York. That's not about decisions. That's about Louis Domingue eventually finding out that he's basically just, what was the dish again? Pork and broccoli and not a lot more. I think it was pork and broccoli. I could be getting that wrong. I often remind myself that what's online isn't necessarily reflective of reality any more than City Hall is going to spend a given morning fielding phone calls from people saying, hey, the garbage man did a great job today picking up my garbage. Can you please pass that along? Thank you so much. That doesn't happen. You only call City Hall to complain. So you're only going to jump online. Not you. I'm not talking about you, Elaine. Generally speaking, you're only going to jump online when you've got something to say. and You're going to have something to say when you're the most emotional. And you're going to be the most emotional, almost without exception, when you're angry. That said, I get the genuine sense that there's very little daylight between what's online and what's in real life right about now. I've mentioned on a couple of occasions the paying crowd at PPG Paints Arena riding the Penguins with vocal disdain in a way that I haven't heard since that building opened. I mean, I can go way, way back and cite some stuff from the Civic Arena, but PPG Paints Arena, I'd never heard that. I'd never heard them screaming, yelling, obscenities, whatever, when the power plays in motion, when it's out there trying to score a goal. So there's a lot of different feeling about this team right now, but most of it is on that side of the fence. People are either disappointed, disillusioned, dismayed, but they don't like what they've seen this season. They don't believe in the team they've been watching all season. 
And to the best of my ability to gauge this sort of thing, they're not close to getting behind any kind of push for the playoffs. We'll see how that plays out. I think you need to see the Penguins put together one really nice win against a quality opponent. And most people still aren't going to regard the Red Wings as that, especially with the way they've fallen off of late, losing eight of their last nine. But beating the Devils, doing so in Newark, where they've always had a tough time. Then having a couple other road games in Dallas and Denver where maybe they could, you know, really run up the score on that count as far as beating good teams. Maybe that'll do it. And then again, maybe it won't. See, the other part of this, there's never a good way to say this, but the players, the people on the inside have almost a responsibility to themselves and to each other to not worry about that sort of thing. They have to tune it out. If it's positive, if it's chanting, let's go pens, they'll embrace it. If it's negative, they have to tune it out. And right now, in this moment, I think they're doing a pretty decent job of that in both directions. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow from New Jersey.